Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio and it's day 15 of the 30 day art journaling challenge called hashtag November Daily Art Journal. Today's prompt, strangely, and I don't know how he came up with this, is black. So that's going to stretch your minds a little bit if you're playing along, <laughs> unless you're just going to make an entire black page and say, oh yeah, that's uh, an angel in the dark. You just can't see her because it's it's too dark. But anyway, you know I've been playing with uh, magazine collage for the last couple of days, and I keep finding stuff in these magazines. And I found this ad that has all these stripes, and I thought, oh, that would be an interesting background. So I took the ad and I cut it up into squares. You know, it was all stripes, and then I'm making a pattern, twisting and turning the squares to make like kind of like a parquet floor type looking thing but um, I didn't have enough squares to fill up the entire background so I kind of modified it so that I had this one little light area in the middle and it actually adds more visual interest that way anyway so I'm using my favorite adhesive the Liquitex matte gel adhesive I still haven't gotten around to looking at the video that uh, I think it was Carrie linked me to from Cat Hand about how to make these magazine pieces lay down without looking crappy. <laughs> but I'm doing my best. I'm still trying to figure it out. So I thought maybe a thicker adhesive like a gel instead of a liquid would make them wrinkle less, which seems to be working okay. but. Uh, it, this paper is just so thin and flimsy and annoying and I really just um, probably gonna not do magazine collage very much but I know people do it successfully and I just I have to take the time to really figure out what I'm doing wrong and I haven't had time because I have to make videos all the time and I don't have time to watch other videos <laughs> hardly at all so uh, I will get there I will get there I'll figure it out the best way to glue down magazine pieces but for now sorry that was my phone um, I'm just putting these down in this pattern I think it looks pretty interesting but as I'm doing it the ink on the magazine pages is smearing a little bit not too bad though but it is a little bit so I have this uh, this saying that I found it's a quote and I didn't write down who the quote is from I think it's from a movie but I thought it would be good for this page um, she always wears black but she has such a colorful mind I think it's an interesting quote so I went ahead and printed that on my computer and then I sealed it with some of this gel with my finger you just saw and I'm letting that dry and then I decided that I didn't want the black and white background to be so so harsh and stark so I decided to put a layer of thinned gesso over it because it's just my first layer I'm gonna put more stuff on top so that kind of seals the page as well because I didn't seal it before I put all the papers down so the interesting thing when I tried this prompt black was that I realized you really can't have black without white. <laughs> black is just like nothingness. It's it's the absence of color, complete absence of color. So really my page is more about being black and white, which is interesting in a, to have such a stark contrast between the two colors, you know. You could probably do something similar to this with two contrasting colors and it would be even more interesting but black and white I guess are contrasting colors since in theory in color theory black is the absence of color and white is all colors because you know the spectrum but really you can't just go and mix up a bit different bunch of acrylic paints all together and make white <laughs> you'll make brownish gray ick muds color if you try that <laughs> it doesn't actually work in reality but in theory that's that's the theory so kind of interesting I decided to make a person 
a girl because the quote says she always wears black so of course my girl is going to wear black and because I can't really justify adding other color to this because it's the prompt is black she's going to be purely black and white as pure as I can get those two colors black and white so I'm drawing her in um, graphite first doing with my you know soft leaded graphite drafting pencil it's not lead it's graphite but we call it lead which is kind of funny <laughs> I think I'm a little punch struck from too many pages people <laughs> so then once I have my drawing complete I am taking some titanium white and this is the most intense white that I have it's the deco art media line fluid paint and it is very very pigmented and opaque but even so I do need to make more than one pass over some of the areas where the black stripes were so I'm just carefully with a very small brush painting in the areas that would be skin in this drawing which is really more kind of like a I don't know a vector or something I guess it's just purely black and white and this takes a while because I'm just carefully carefully painting it in with a tiny brush and going over the stripes a couple times so as I'm watching this because she has a fairly wide nose and um, very full lips perhaps if it wasn't so stark she would be african-american which would make her black <laughs> that was completely unintentional though uh, she just happens to have full lips I don't know maybe she does look a little bit african-american I'm not sure but I'm also not sure that if if she was that I would have to paint her completely black which would make no sense so I don't know anyway that's ne neither here nor there I decided to get out some uh, uh, dilutions there we go dilutions black black marble is the name of the color and it's also a very intense highly pigmented paint so I thought it would be good for doing some stenciling I was using two different sections of the stencil and I accidentally flipped it over so I had paint on both sides so I had to clean it off <laughs> so that I could use the other section because if I if I laid it down to do you know because I'm flipping back and forth between different sections I would get just a big black blob because I had paint on both sides silly very silly I'm actually using three sections of this this stencil and they all look like splatters or splashes of ink basically as if you had uh, got out your India ink bottle and it just and just shook it all over the place <laughs> and that's just adding in a darker black a pure dark black to the page because since I went over the black and white stripes with diluted white gesso they became kind of gray so I guess I actually have gray on my page as well because you can't have black and white without shades of gray and I've heard there's 50 of them <laughs> I don't think I think there's infinite amounts of different colors of gray if you ever look at Copic arc alcohol markers like as a set they come with an amazingly large amount of different shades of gray which I find interesting like more than pure color there's tons of gray different shades of gray but I guess you could really make some kind of ombre thing by using the darkest color and then blending it all the way up to the lightest one and it'd be very you know shaded in a very precise way because that's really kind of what those markers are for I think I'm going to ask for some for Christmas because you know I have some uh, a friend and a mom that likes to buy me art supplies <laughs> so I might get some at Christmas maybe if I'm lucky 
Because those expensive art supplies, that's how I get them. I get them as gifts. If I was actually a working artist, I could buy them for myself. But believe me, I'm working. I'm just not getting paid. <laughs> I do have a few commissions coming up, though. So if I don't get them for Christmas, maybe I can afford to buy some. But anyway, now I'm doing the edge of the pages all the way around. I think that gives it a finished look, um, a finite boundary. I, I like that look. So going for that with just the same dilutions paint and my makeup sponge. And then, of course, I got out my fine white and black Posca pens, and I'm just like making the small lines around the edges and also cleaning up areas where I couldn't make the line small enough without getting out an even smaller brush. And I didn't even want to attempt to paint in the areas on the face because they're just too small. So I prefer to do it with a pen. I have more control with the pen. And since Posca pens are basically just acrylic paint in a pen, it works out great. Just adding more detail, more fine detail. So I'm not really sure what's blowing her hair so crazy. There must be a huge wind coming in from the left side of the page, but <laughs> I didn't draw the wind or a fan or the exhaust from a airplane or whatever it is that's making your hair go so crazy. It's just trying to create movement rather than just having your hair laying flat. It's not the best drawing I've ever done. It's not the worst. It's just another drawing on another day. Then I had a couple areas to touch up with white and I also can add a little bit more um, movement lines within the black. They would of course be white. I guess this page is all about the contrast between black and white. That's all I can make a prompt that's black about. I can't think of anything else. <laughs> Might have been kind of cool to put some sunglasses on her. But I didn't. Okay, so I think that the drawing is done and I'm going to put on the little quote from whatever movie it's from. I don't know. Or maybe lyrics. I'm not sure. It's a little bit too long to fit on one half of the page, so I end up cutting it and putting on putting it partially on one, partially on the other, which makes it appear slightly crooked because of the way it goes down into the middle of the journal. That's one thing about journals. You know, it's it's hard to make a straight line all the way across a double page spread in a journal because there's constantly this crease in the middle that annoys you. But I think it worked out okay. Then I decided it still needed more something. Oh, I was just touching up a little bit of a smear right there that I had. What else does it need? I guess it needs more black. That's all I can think of. More black. So I dry it up and then I decide to do some dripping with golden high flow acrylic. This is a very highly pigmented acrylic paint that has probably something like airbrush medium in it that makes it very thin. But I tell you what, it's opaque. There's no translucency here in this one at all. <laughs> and once you get it on there, you can't get it off. I, um, in a bit, you'll see me accidentally cover up the S with a little bit of the black dripping. And I go to try to wipe it back, thinking that I should probably keep the S. <laughs> and I can't get it off. Once it's on there, it's on. It's on there. That's it. I also did some white splattering with the white, titanium white, um, golden high flow. These are from the, the easiest and most inexpensive way to buy them 
they're not inexpensive, but the way to get them is in a set of eight colors. And there's three different sets of eight colors. And the, the one that I got has both the titanium white and the carbon black in it. So they're really fun for dripping because they run so well and they're not diluted. They're not, um, they don't become transparent. So it's pretty cool. I like them. And then I just drew the S back in kind of sloppily with the white pin so that there would be an S at the beginning of she. And I lined around the quote and I think that's pretty much all I did. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, uh, comment, share, whatever, subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to check out my friends' videos in the description box below with the, what they made with this prompt. And um, you can still join us using the hashtag. So that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.